Today's scripture is from the Gospel of John in the New Testament, beginning the second chapter, the first verse. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rite of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, and the disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they remained there a few days. Here ends the reading, and may God bless these words to our understanding. Thank you, Kathy. So since the theme of this sermon series that we're doing is Jesus stories, I decided that I would try out a sermon that is just a story about Jesus. Um, I use scripture and some research about the first century in this, but I want to stress that this is a fictional story made up by your pastor, hopefully to bring some new light uh, to this classic story. Be forewarned, this is not my usual preaching style, and I do not plan on preaching this way often. It's kind of an experiment. So um, the way this will work is, after the prayer, I'll be speaking in the voice of a fictional person, Jesus' second cousin, Ju Jonah, also an attendee at the wedding. So let us pray together. Gracious God, may the words of my lips, may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. I met Jesus at Cana. Well, technically I already knew him. My mother and his mother are cousins of a similar age and uh, we would sometimes be at the same family functions. Every year our caravan would link up with theirs on our way to Jerusalem for the Passover. But he wasn't Jesus yet. You know, he was just extended family. My sister Rachel's wedding was one of those family functions when I would see him, and it was my first time seeing him in a long while. It was late fall after Sukkot, and the grain harvest had already been brought in. My sister had been betrothed for almost two years to a man named David from Capernaum, and it was finally time for the wedding feast. So here's the thing about weddings in my hometown. These aren't short ceremonies followed by an evening reception and nice dinner with some free table wine. These were full-on festivals when your relatives would take over your village, sleep in your houses, and expect food and wine non-stop for a week. So when I say Mary arrived early to help with hosting duties, I mean she showed up two days early to help set up for a big gathering over many days. And when I say Jesus showed up late, I mean he arrived on the last day of festivities, the grand banquet before David takes my sister Rachel to Capernaum, to the home that he's prepared for them. To be fair, he wasn't close with my sister or my mother, but was coming as a favor to his own mother, Mary. Now at this time, there were already rumors floating around about Jesus. 
The biggest had to do with my other second cousin, John, who leads a religious movement outside of Jerusalem. He baptizes people in the Jordan for the forgiveness of sins and warns of the judgment that is to come. I haven't visited John at the Jordan, and if I'm being honest, he makes me uncomfortable. He's all about morals, justice, judgment, and denying oneself. Don't get me wrong, I keep the commandments and I understand the importance of justice, but it's all so joyless with John. There's no room in his world for art and literature, love, creativity, and, and frankly, I'm glad he didn't make the wedding because he's no fun at parties. But the big rumor about Jesus was that after spending time with John, he was baptized in the Jordan and the heavens parted and there was a voice. There was also a rumor that he was beginning to gather his own followers and that the two men he brought with him to the wedding, Simon and Andrew, were his first and closest disciples. The three of them were sitting together when Mary came up to Jesus, clearly upset. Now, a decent person would have given them privacy, but lucky for you, I'm nosy and curious. The wine is running out and what is left is terrible. If they serve it, my cousin Esther will be humiliated, Mary said to Jesus. Esther is my mother, one of Mary's closest friends, and we were down to the last of our wine for two reasons. The first being more people arrived than we expected and they drank more than they should have. But the second is simply that our family was too poor to buy enough. We barely had enough for a dowry. At this point, I feel like my eavesdropping is now justified, as this is about my family and my current predicament. I just got here, Jesus told her. And what does this have to do with me? Yes, you just got here two days late. This wedding is important to me. I know it's important, Mom. That's why I came at all. You wanted me here, and now I'm here. What else do you want from me? You want me to make water out of wine? Mary gave him a knowing smile. No, it's not my time yet, he said. Son, the heavens have opened and it's in motion. She didn't even wait for an answer. She just walked right over to the stewards hired for the wedding, a different set of cousins working the wedding as a favor to my father. Do whatever he tells you, she said to them. Now, honestly, they're weren't that many of us paying attention to what was going on at this point. Just Mary, the stewards, Simon, Andrew, and me. Jesus had the stewards fill six large stone jars with water. Now these weren't designed for serving. These were used for purification, each holding 20 to 30 gallons, about 150 gallons in total. He then told the stewards to draw from the jar and serve it to the chief steward. As they drew the water from the jar, it was transformed before our very eyes into wine. We were all stunned. The steward holding the ladle, Moses, just froze. None of us knew what to do. Take it to the chief steward, Jesus said, but don't let anyone know where it came from until tomorrow. Moses brought a cup to the chief steward, telling him that there was plenty more in the back. My parents were extremely confused when the chief steward declared it the best wine he ever tasted and commended them on saving the best for last. Jesus insisted on serving the wine to all of us who witnessed the miracle. And to do it personally, he served me, Andrew, Simon, and even the two remaining stewards. And he held up the cup and gave a toast. And it was indeed the best wine I had ever tasted in my life. That was when I met Jesus, the real Jesus for the first time. The miracle was impossible to deny, but it wasn't the magic that got me, it was the wine. When I tasted it, I tasted the goodness, the joy, the gladness of God. This wine was about more than daily bread, it was about creativity and celebration, beauty and elegance. It wasn't just adequate. It was good. 
And the God who made this wine from water, I can no longer see him as the stern judge in the sky. Instead, I see him as a living and perhaps even intoxicating presence here on earth. I follow Jesus to Capernaum the next day, along with Mary and his brothers and sisters and the other disciples. And I kept following him. The next year, I witnessed Jesus cure the lame and help the blinded see. I would witness him cast out demons and even bring a man back from death. I would learn to love and appreciate the God of justice, the God who made the wounded whole. And I would learn how deeply the same God that restores life is also the God that brings us life in full, full of love, full of truth, full of adventure, and full of good wine, poured freely, helping us taste and see that God is good. Thanks be to God, and amen.